Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble, and today we're going to be going over some 3D model stuff. Now, one of my favorite things about version 5 of KiCad and onwards uh, has been the implementation of step models and bringing those in and being able to export them from KiCad. I, I was really surprised by this. You know, working on electronics for a long time, I thought that the most important things were going to be, you know, the schematic, the push and shove, like all the other things that I do like about the program. However, I have found that as I'm especially as I'm making things smaller and smaller so the, tight, the tolerances are tightened, I find that this has actually been a really useful feature for me, uh, mostly for peace of mind to make sure things push together. And so this has been something that I've been doing and trying to like force myself into doing. I have some other videos on here about making 3D models or using 3D models and modifying them just to get some rough ideas. But but really from a spacing perspective and really just as like a sanity check. That's what it really all comes down to is like, hey, is this where I think it's going to be? Is this component the right height? Is it going to interfere with X, Y, Z? Does it matter you know, if I put a component here, is that gonna be a problem? And sometimes just having that visual thing outside of my head, right? I, I can visualize maybe what I think the board's gonna look like, but if I look at what, it actually, what I've actually designed and where the components are going to be on there, that really has a bigger impact on me. So let's take a look at how I do this. Uh, this is a board that I, I've been working on. Uh, this is called the, uh, the daughter card board, the ABCDCBA. Uh, we're talking about, a, I don't think I have any public videos about it otherwise, but this goes with the ABC board. So the ABC board I've definitely talked about before. The last video I put out for Contextual Electronics kind of was an overview of it. So the ABC board is a is a uh, board that is uh, cellular and Bluetooth, and basically you can plug into it. This is now the daughter card that plugs onto that, right? So the idea is that on the daughter card, you design in whatever sensors you want to have on there, and you can keep making new and newer and newer daughter cards that plug into the ABC board. Okay, cool. But how do we make sure that that really small area between the two boards, right? The whole idea is that these are meant to sandwich together. So I wanted to go and uh, make this. I wanted to make sure I had enough clearance there so that it wasn't having any inter interference. So if we take a look here, obviously it's, you know, this is this is just the, the daughter card board. There is no, uh, there's no ABC board in here. So I was like, okay, well, I should go and generate the ABC board. So what I did is I, I generated the step file for the ABC board. This is, you know, this is gonna be the files for uh, the daughter card board, but the ABC board, right, I go and just g export step file, and that's how you actually go and export it. So I'd already done that for the ABC board. Okay, cool. Now, how do I bring this into here, though? Because I do want to actually visualize the ABC board. So what I did is I put in this element here called housing, so N1, right? And then the foot, so this is just the schematic symbol, and this is just so it sticks around when I update the project. I don't have to lock footprints or anything like that. So I put this into my project as just an element in the schematic. Then I assign it a footprint. In this case, I just assigned it the KiCad logo. And then you may have noticed that on this board, it does actually have the KiCad logo on the back. Great. That's a great way to promote your own logo. You know, you could tie your own logo on there. You could tie, you know, made with KiCad on there. You could put just something silly on there. It really doesn't matter. But I do recommend uh, that, you know, you have something actually on the board. So the, because what we need is we need a footprint then that we could uh, assign the 3D model to. Now, another thing I've done in the past is I've, I've actually assigned a secondary uh, 3D model to the actual connector itself. So I did that actually on the ABC board, is that what I did is I took the, I had the, you know, I'm obviously going to have a connector in there. So I take the connector and then I say, hey, we're going to put the 3D model of the connector in here, but then we're also going to uh, put the 3D model of the thing it's plugging into, and we're going to line those up right there. In this case, I did it with the KiCad logo, and then what I did is, uh, so then if I go into here and I select the actual KiCad logo, so I mouse over it, hit E, right? I actually already have, uh, I've already done this once before, so I'm just turning this on. And the way that I enable or disable uh, the actual link to the step file that I use, the ABC step file, so in this case, I turned it off by just interrupting the path by just changing it a little bit, right? So there's dot step dash isn't a thing, but when I go to dot step, now we're actually able to see, okay, now it's actually loading up the, the ABC's 3D model in here, right? And so it takes a little while here, but once it's in there, and once it's actually, and you see that I actually do have, I had to play around with some of the rotation and the offsets, well actually significant amount of the offsets here because of the, uh, the differing amounts of uh, uh, how I generated the model and where it's zero point is and all that other stuff. Okay, did that do it? I think so. Yep. 
Oh, or did I crash the program? No, there it is. Okay, so now the model's in here. Unfortunately, the preview window is only so big, so you really can't see too much of it here. But what you can see is that, yes, it is in here. And based on where the, the, the KiCad logo is, you see, well, the KiCad logo is just underneath this. And now we have this 3D model here. So now, oh, I hit OK. Now I'm going to go back to this, uh, the actual 3D viewer. Now we actually have the whole thing in here. OK, cool. And now we can see, yeah, so now we can see this is the thing that we needed to check. So a couple things that I needed to check on this board, right? We made the daughter card board already. It has a mating connector here. And it's meant to mate in with the ABC's connector. The other thing we wanted to check, and a thing that I played with a lot on the ABC board, is making sure that the height of the components on the ABC board are not so tall that they interfere with any daughter card that we put in there. So the ABC board has all the components in the center section there. And the only component on the back side of the daughter card is the mating connector. Everything else is on the top side. So that allowed us to see that. We can also see the, uh, the alignment here. One thing actually I didn't catch, uh, which was a little frustrating, is I didn't catch the, uh, yeah, so I, I reused the, uh, the, the hole size for the four corner holes there. And it's actually sized for those metal standoffs, which is the Keystone 4881. It's like this surface mount solderable uh, standoff which I'm really excited about, but I didn't actually shrink the hole size down. So I'm already on rev B of this daughter cardboard because I, I should have shrunk the hole size down here. If you look at this, the uh, this hole size is bigger than I want it to be. So this is actually one thing where the 3D model did not do me well. Uh, I should have noticed like, oh, hey, there's a bunch of extra room here. It only really needs to be the size of this inner diameter hole. But otherwise, it's nice to have this in here. Great. Okay, so what else can we do here though? So the daughter cardboard plugs into the ABC board. The ABC board is a uh, Raspberry Pi hat. So I thought, hey, let's go and add a another logo here, right? And we'll just change out the model that's assigned to it, right? So let's go find another uh, logo. We might want to, oh, actually, we should do this in here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to copy this housing thing here. So this is in the schematic again. Now I'm going to go in and change the logo. Let's just go find some other interesting logo here. Uh, uh, where, uh, yeah, okay. Well, we can't put the FCC logo on there, uh, but there's a bunch of different KiCad logos. Cool. Uh, there's open source hardware, Rojas. This actually is Rojas. So let's just go and put that in, I guess. What else is in here? Uh, it's polarity. Eh. High voltage. No, we don't want to put, <laughs> don't want to put it in anything that's like, uh, not true. Um, Creative Commons, that's cool. Share alike, that's great. Open source hardware, there's a bunch in there. ESD, CE logo, different than RCE, the, the contextual electronics logo, of course, CE logo. Uh, but let's actually, uh, well, why don't we do that? We can actually just go and put a second contextual electronics logo on the back of this board. That should be in here. So here's another CE logo. Well, so we'll do this one here. So we'll do put the ABC logo on the back side here. Okay, cool. So now we hit save. We go back into layout. We're going to pull this in here. We're going to have to annotate. Fine. Great. Update here. We already have one on the front side. What we're going to do is put this on the back side. And we'll put this here. Let's try and put it kind of in the center of things. So if we take a look here. Okay, so I want to go and actually look at the back side of the board now. How do I do that? I go back in here. I select the KiCad logo. E to edit, and then just add some character on the end here, and that just effectively says, hey, I don't know where to find this thing anymore. I'm going to make it disappear from the 3D model. Great. All right, so cool. Now we can know to move the logo. Let's go hit 4 to go to the back side. Look at the back side silk. And let's actually go, nope, that's not it. Let's move this logo a little bit to the left or the right as it is here. Okay, cool. So that's what it's going to look like here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go assign a 3D model to that logo. And like I said, you could have assigned this to a bunch of other things. This is just kind of the hacky way that I do this. Uh, so I'm going to hit E on this logo. You see that it currently has nothing assigned to it in the 3D model space. But now I'm going to go and actually uh, see if I can find the Raspberry Pi that I have. I'm pretty sure I have the Raspberry Pi in the ABC folder that's associated there's a different uh, folder for ABC. That's the wrong one. Where is PCBs? 
Um, I gotta figure out where my PCBs folder is. Ah, it's in my personal stuff. So users, Chris, PCBs, CE. And then we're gonna go in here and I should have, I thought I had in here, Add drawings. There it is, okay. And we're just gonna grab the Raspberry Pi 4, put the folder there. I don't think it is in there actually. Ah, there we go. That step. Okay, we got a preview. All right, so now it's completely off kilter here. Right, this is just like, hey, I'm gonna stick the model right. The zero zero is gonna line up with your zero zero, and we can take a look at how this looks on here. And so this is where it becomes kind of a guess and check kind of thing for me, at least. It doesn't have to be like it would. This would definitely be a much easier thing to do. You know, you could export everything here and do it in you know a Fusion 360 or FreeCAD or however you want to do that sort of thing. You could go and uh, you know, export it and do all this stuff externally. And the nice thing about that is you could probably line up, you know, like say, hey, here's an edge, here's an edge, you know, al align the two edges in a CAD program. Like parametric modeling programs are great for that sort of thing and, and really to constrain things based on edges. But in this case, I really would just want to have it so that it's here as a reference point to visualize everything. And it's a little bit easier to then go and export pretty pictures for later. Although this Raspberry Pi is kind of got not a great color to it, but that's fine. Okay, so what we know what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna have to rotate this thing uh, on whatever this axis is, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna put the other 3D model back in here too. So I'm gonna go back into here, Oops. select the logo, undo my, this thing, should pull this back in. Okay, that's back in here now, I'm gonna hit okay. Should have it show up now. All right, yep, and it is there. Well, it's sort of there. It's kind of a mess to look at it like now, but now we're back to at least to where we were. So like I said, we want to rotate this thing around this axis, and then we're going to kind of just slowly move it around to, to match. Okay. So let's give this a shot here. So we're going to select this logo again. We want to rotate on this axis. So we're going to rotate on the x axis, it looks like. Minus 90. It's so big that we can't even rotate like that. So that part kind of stinks. And then I think we want to actually rotate it around the z 180 degrees. Let's give that a shot. Let's go back, see how that looks. Now this is, ah, nice, nice guess, Chris. All right, so now we're gonna wanna slide it in that direction and go down in the Z axis as well. Um, yeah, the downside to doing it like this is obviously that it's, uh, this is a guess and check kind of thing, which is maybe a little less great than it could be otherwise. What did I just do there? I think I lost my, there we go. It is not liking me finding this logo. Um, there we go. All right, so we want to slide it in which direction? This direction. So we're going to slide away from the camera right now. So that'll be an offset in the X direction, it looks like. And then we're gonna go down. I'm not sure that's right, actually. Oh, interesting. I guess in this case, it's the Y direction. So let's give that a shot.
Oh no. I think I lost my other, oh, I lost my other settings there. Okay. This is not letting me select this very easily. Let's turn off the footprints, I guess. That makes things easier. There we go. Yeah, I lost my rotations there. Okay, well, that stinks. So let me try that one more time. I think it's because I hit Control-Z at some point. All right, so I was doing, I think, in the X, I was doing 90 degrees. I think it was 90 that way and 180 this way. Just double check that. I think I got the 90 wrong. All right, should be back to square one now. Yeah, there we go, great. All right, so now we wanna go in so we're gonna go down, which in this case is up, it seems like. Let's try that. It's gonna to be too far, I think. All right, getting there. Now we want to go to the left as well. Let's try that. All right, almost there. A little bit further in the X. It's a little bit further in the X, a little bit further in the Y. And the Z is just about there. So I'll give the Z another Touch there. Take it to there. Let's try it like that. Okay, almost. A little bit more on the X, and then another bit more on the Y. Okay. The wrong way. Let's try that. Hopefully, the last one. Oh, so close. And one more time. It's a bit of twenty one. too far. Okay. A little bit of overshoot there. Yeah, we'll call that. Okay, great. And so now what we have is we have the full stack up of what we're doing there. Now, I actually had, like I said, I had done this in the ABC board. I actually have the, uh, I also had the ABC board paired with the Raspberry Pi. But now this is because we're actually working on the the daughter card board here. That's actually what everything's being referenced to here. So it's a little bit more offset than it might have been. The things that I really cared about for the ABC when we were doing it, and all of that, all of that, all the stuff that we did there is visible on contextelectronics.com. We actually, you know, showed this whole course uh, and all the stuff we were doing here. But uh, I was caring about you know the alignment of the holes and making sure that we didn't have any interference in here and seeing how the antenna hookups were going to work. Uh, and like I said, most of the time, uh, you know, that's going to be the main thing that we were trying to uh, align there. This is also you know most of the time that we're actually using the daughter card here, it's actually going to be broken out of the center section. So this is really just showing the entire package here. And really, it's just for doing like I said, pretty pretty pictures. Sometimes you want to hit the you know the realistic render, the ray tracing render here. And then you get this nice view of the whole thing. And then this is what you could send off to people and, uh, and show off 
at some point in the future. Maybe you, you go and match all your the colors of your PCBs as well, or you send it to you know you send it out to to really get a, a really nice realistic render if you really wanted to. But this is kind of what we're going with to, with here. So this was for for the ABC DCBA board, the daughter card board assembly. We you know I've been working on this board. It plugs into the ABC board, which is the one underneath it, which then plugs into Raspberry Pi, which is all the way underneath it. And I wanted to get everything kind of in one shot there. And you can see how I have this. And so the nice thing is that then you have 3D models to have as reference points for later. And you can really check kind of dimensions, but also just how things are kind of fitting together in your world. So uh, if you're interested in this sort of thing, the entire course, including the, the daughter card board that I just showed, and the ABC stuff, that's all available in Contextual Electronics. It's over 100 videos, really just showing the entire from concept all the way to present, how we're building this thing up. And so if you're interested in that sort of thing, it's a free, there's a free week on contextualelectronics.com. You can go and sign up. There's no risk to do that sort of thing. Uh, so go sign up today and check it out. You can go and watch as many videos as you want in that first week and, and see if you like it. And if you, are, if you do, you can stick around and we'll be making, we keep making new videos for Contextual Electronics including things like firmware development and you know simple boards, more complicated boards, kind of all over the place, trying a lot of different things and showing our work, which is our big thing. So uh, yeah, that's all for now from Contextual Electronics. If you have any questions, you can always go to the Contextual Electronics forum, ask some questions about this video, about your other questions you might have about electronics. A lot of friendly people over there to answer your questions and help you build your next project. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.